it everyone welcome back to the workshop i hope you're all doing well now i'm continuing on with this amazing japanese woodworking art form known as kumiko so i'm starting out with the basic pattern this is i believe it's called the asanoa pattern it's kind of the pattern everybody starts out with so that's what i'm going to show you how to make in this video now in a previous video i made the kumiko jigs so the 25.5 degree the 67.5 degree and the 45 degree jigs and you will need this in order to make these kumiko pattern so if you've not seen that video i highly recommend you do so i will link it in the description below but for this video like i said we're going to start out with this basic pattern and kumiko can be absolutely beautiful and complex and once you get going and get a system set up it starts to become easier and you can start to really batch these things out so that's what we're going to do in this video now i also have another little jig that i've made for my table saw to fit into my cross cut sled so i'll show you that in this video as well however all this work can absolutely be done with hand tools there's no power tools required you can do everything with hand tools and you can make and adapt these jigs to work with hand tools as well so without further ado let's get on and make this pattern okay so this is the pattern we are going to be making today now it looks complicated and complex but when you break it down it's actually quite simple so the first thing you want to decide is how big our square is going to be or our grid pattern and i've made it um, a two inch or 50 mil grid so we have six pieces so essentially it's broken into four squares if you can see the four squares there when we're assembling this it will all make sense so we need six pieces so we've got three pieces running straight up the way and we've three pieces running across the way and that makes our grid to put our pieces into so decide on the size of your grid i have like i said 50 mil spacings which makes it 100 mil or four inches in total and we need to have six pieces in order to build our grid now i've left them all over side so you always leave a bit over hanging the ends and they can be trimmed off so you end up with a perfect square when you're finished so let's get on i'll show you the jig and the table saw now and how we cut these um, to make our grid it's very very simple so let's do that okay so just before we go to the table saw i have my kumiko strips here now i'll show you how i made my strips in another video that's a kind of a video on its own but you can actually buy packs of kumiko strips if you guys don't want to make your own you can actually buy these in packs like i said now these are oak oak is not a great material to use um it's just a little bit harder to work with normally they use basswood or woods that you use in carving i'm going to try and get my hands on some european lime wood i believe that's a great wood for carving but you want something that's a uniform color so you don't want something it has loads of different grain in it uh, maybe sapwood that kind of thing it has to be a uniform color otherwise it will show up in your pattern so something that's all a consistent color throughout the timber that's what you want to use and obviously something like basswood and um, maybe a white pine um, or some european lime wood would be the absolute best stuff to use because it's easy to work with but we're going to use the oak strips so first thing we want to do is cut our strips for our grid now like i said my grid has uh, 50 mil or two inch spacings making it 100 mil wide and i want to leave a 20 mil overhang um, either end so i'm just going to cut this at 140 mil this doesn't have to be exact here so i need six strips so we just measure them off quickly and we cut six of these okay now that i have all my six strips cut I'm just going to tape the ends of these together and the ends don't have to be neat or square or anything like that you can just cut them roughly because that is the waste piece so i'm just going to take a small little bit of masking tape and split this down the middle and we're just going to tape the ends of this together just to hold them all together so when we're putting in the jig and the cross cut sled we're cutting all of them at the same time now like i said you can absolutely do this with a bench hook and you can make the exact same jig i'm going to show you now on the table saw for doing this and you can cut them all by hand and you use the exact same method so you just tape them all together and you would cut all your slots at once it's just a quick and easy way to batch them out and it just ensures that everything lines up as well so there we go nothing more to it than that there's our six sticks to make our grid and we shall uh, just cut them you now to make the grid okay so here we are at the cross cut sled and this is a little jig i've made for building my grids now it's nice and simple and like i said this can be adapted to be made into a bench hook to use with a handsaw as well so similar to a actual 
cross-cut slate. It has a back fence to stabilize your base piece. I have a slot cut all the way through. And then I have a slot at 10, every 10 millimeters cut halfway through to take a key. And that's how I can build my grid pattern from 20 mil up to 100 mil. And I can make a, a more complex grid pattern too. If I want more cross pieces going through it, I can do it with this. It'll be all very self-explanatory now when you see this in operation. So we're gonna use the 50 mil spacing or the two inch spacing. So I have my key set in the 50 mil. So just a case of line my jig up with my slot. I'm just gonna clamp that and hold that in place. It just goes against the back fence of the cross cut slit. Now, something I should point out is that your Kumiko strips need to be the exact width of your saw blade if you're going to be using your uh, table saw to do this. So make your strips the thickness of your saw blade, minus 2.8 millimeters. So that's what these are. They're actually a little bit undersized, but they will work for this demonstration. So nice and simple, we're going to cut our first slot, I allowed a 20 mil overhang, so I'm going to cut my first slot at 20 mil right there, put my key into 50 mil, and then I can take that slot, click it onto my key, and then I have perfect spacings of 50 mil. And the saw height, or the blade height that I have it set to, is exactly uh, half the width of one of these strips I'm going to cut into. Again, this will be very self-explanatory when you see this in the operation. So let's get on and do that. So there we go, that's essentially all our six pieces cut for our grid now. Equal spacings of 50 mil using this jig. And like I said, I can add more pieces, I can make the design more complex, I can space the grid out, I can go out to 100 mil or take it to a four inch grid pattern if I so choose as well. So very, very simple. Let's go assemble this. Okay, so we have our sticks all cut. I just pulled the masking tape off the end of them, so it's handy to cut them all at the same time. We know they're all the same, they're all accurate. We're half the depth, as you can see, or half the thickness or width of our um, stick in depth for our slot. And uh, again, the slot is the thickness of our saw blade, which is the thickness of these guys. So to assemble this, it's nice and simple. It's only a grid pattern, like I said. So they just click together to make our four squares. Now these are actually a little undersized. I did these on my planar thicknesser, which is not a great idea because when you get down to really skinny pieces like this, uh, the planar thicknesser is not great. A drum sander will be better, but I'm actually gonna make a jig for a hand plane in an upcoming video. And uh, I'll show you guys how to do all this by hand as well. So we'll thickness all these pieces with a hand plane and we'll get them down to the exact size of our saw blade. These ones are just about half a mil too narrow. So the grid is a little bit loose, but when we have all the pieces in, it will tighten itself up. So that all just slots together just like that. So you, there's our grid, nice and simple. You can see our four squares now. So once you break it down like this, it starts to become really easy. So let's make this. So the first thing we wanna do is make our angle pieces. So going out from our center to each corner, so from the center point out to each corner are the four pieces we need to make, which are these four pieces here. So let's get on and do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just take a measurement across my square out from the corner. I'm just gonna measure corner to corner to make sure this is exactly square. And that is saying 66 millimeters corner to corner is what I have there. So I'm gonna cut four pieces oversized, so you want to over, always make them oversized and work back to your angles. So 66 millimeters is what I need corner to corner. So cut four of those, we'll cut them at 70 millimeters and that will give us plenty of scope then to pair back to our 45 degree angles. So let's cut four of those and then we'll pair them back on the 45 degree jig. <laughs> Okay, so I have my three 
um, pairing jigs set up now in my Moxon vise. And this is one of the reasons why I made three separate jigs. A lot of people I see, they make the three jigs in one, so you rotate the block. But I like to have all three set up so I don't have to swap the block around. I can work at any angle I, want, I need to work at. They're all there, ready to go set up in the Moxon vise. I have my grid pattern here beside me. So I'm just gonna take my first piece. I'm gonna go to my 45 degree jig and I'm gonna pair a 45 degree angle on both sides of this. So these pieces can get quite small and quite delicate. Uh, one of you guys, I think, asked me in a previous video, why didn't you make a shooting board? Well, when you see the really small pieces now, you'll understand why this is probably the best way to do it. And uh, I'm certainly not gonna argue with the Japanese guys who do this because they do amazing work and they use jigs very similar to this. A lot of this work, I find, is just eyeballing. So just make sure that I have an even 45 this way and this way. I can then take it to my grid, put it in the corner, see exactly where I need to be. That's not too bad. I can just actually pair this other end. I'll get you guys in for a close look and show you this. Okay, so when pairing the piece, it's nice and easy. You don't want to let it stick out too much. You want to use your fence to support the back of the piece. And I'm using oak here, so you can get a lot of breakout on this. So you really do want it to have it all just kind of inside your fence. So a little 45 on that side, put it back in. And we want to just cut a 45 again on this side, flip it around. And we just want to make sure that we have a nice even angle. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but we have a nice even 45 so that the point of our angle is dead center of this piece. And again, that's just a case of just eyeball this and just make sure everything is good to go. And that is looking pretty good. So we can fit this into our grid now and see how it's fitting. Okay, so there's our piece in. So if I just drop it in like that, you can see we have our 45s matching here and our 45s are matching in here. Now, when I put all this together, it would be nice and tight like this. This is actually not glued and it's good and solid. You can glue them if you so choose. So I've just measured my square now and that is perfectly square. So I know this is good. So I'm gonna make four more or three more of these now to go into those squares and we'll put them in place. And when I have that done, we'll jump back in. Okay, here's our four pieces in. So nice and simple from our center out to our opposite corner and once they're in it stiffens up the whole thing now it shouldn't be so stiff that you force these in and distort your square these should all be perfect squares when you put the first one in it'll be loose but when you get the other three in the whole thing will tighten up and like i said there's no glue required you can put it all back apart again at the end and glue this and uh, really make it a kind of a permanent piece but um, that's our four pieces in now nice and simple and once you have your first one done you can set the stop on your pairing guide and you can back out the rest of them so if you're doing a really complex pattern there could be a load of these in it and you want to batch out and load them as well you can do that with the pairing jigs that's the whole point of them now next up we want to make these pieces here so there's four per square so that's 16 of them in total so this is something we're going to have to batch out now this piece is the, it's the most complicated piece in it it's not very very hard we have two angles here of 22.5 so we're going to pair either side of this piece at 22.5 and then we have two cuts here of 67.5 and we want to offset this angle so the center of our angle is going to be slightly offset to one side i'll show you that when we're doing it it's not very complicated so let's crack on and make these pieces okay so in order to get the length of these pieces i'm just going to take my steel ruler and i'm going to put it from corner to corner here so that splits my square in half. I'm just gonna take this piece, put it into the angle, and then I wanna center it. You can, again, you can eyeball this. So I wanna split this triangle here in half, which is roughly, as I'm looking at it, right about there. So get that into the corner, just eyeball that, make sure everything is nice and lined up. I can get a rough measurement on this then which is about there. And again, I wanna cut these over size. So I have 16 pieces to cut that size there now. So I'll get on and do that. And then we can start putting the angles on these. Okay, I have my pieces roughly cut to size. This is my first one. So if I, 
I've just put an angle of 22.5 degrees on either end of this. So if I slot that into that corner, let that sit in perfectly, that should line me pretty much up center of this triangle here. Again, put my steel ruler across corner to corner, and that will give me exactly where I need to be. So I'm just gonna put a pencil mark right on that there so I can see where that angle needs to be. And again, I'm gonna cut these now just a little bit oversized past this pencil mark so I can work back that to that angle when I'm pairing it. So there you go, that's how we establish this. Okay, when it comes to making these pieces, these are the more complicated ones. Again, it's not very complicated. So what I like to do is like to start on my 22.5 degree angle. I don't actually set my jig, so I'll just bring this piece out to the edge here. And I just take a little shaving, 22.5 degree, and same on this side, this one is already cut. And uh, this is like a 50-50, so that point of this angle would be the dead center of this piece again, so we're even on both sides. Now it's slightly different for the 67.5, and this is one of the reasons it's nice to have your jigs set up all three together. So I do have the stop set on this one once I make my first piece and I know it's the right size. So I'm gonna drop in this, with my 22.5 degree against my stop, and I'm gonna pair the end of this. Now, I wanna take a heavier cut on one side as opposed to the other side. So I'm gonna offset this angle. I'll try and show you this on camera. It's not gonna to be too easy to capture with the oak, so it's not gonna to be too uh, clear, but I'm taking a light cut on this side, which means the point of my angle is offset to one side of this piece. And I'll see if I can catch that on camera for you guys now. Okay, it's going to be a little bit hard to show you this because I'm not getting super clean cuts on the end of this oak, but hopefully this, you can see this. So you can see the ridge of my 67.5. So it's 67.5 degree angle on this side and on this side, but you can see my ridge or my point is offset slightly. So it's a heavier cut on this side than this side. And I'll show you the reason for that now. So you just take a light cut here, heavier cut here, and that moves the center of your angle over to one side, if that makes sense. Uh, hopefully it does. Again, it's a little hard to catch on camera with the oak. Like I said, base wood or um, uh, lime wood would be better for this. Okay, so when it comes to installing these two pieces, it's nice and simple. So our 22.5 degree ends go into the corner and our two 67.5s come together. Now it's the short sides that come together. So the side that you've paired the smallest amount off, the side that the point is offset towards, that's what you put together here. So it's just a case of slip that guy in there. Put this guy in here. Push the two of those together. And they'll almost hold themselves together now just like that. We put in our key piece, which will be our final piece. So what that essentially does now is I have an angle of 90 degrees between these two pieces now, and I have an angle of 90 degrees here. Now, I will know I'm right if I take my steel rule and I go corner to corner like that, and that intersects that angle perfectly there, which it does. So I know I'm good, I know those two pieces are good, so I can go and batch out the rest of these now. And then we can make our smaller pieces, which have nice and simple, these are the easiest pieces. They just have two cuts of 45 on this side, two cuts of 45 on this side, and they're essentially our keys which hold all this together. So I have 16 of these, we have two made, so I have another 14 of these to make, so I'll get on and do that, put them all in place, and then we'll make our final pieces, and it's almost there. So you can see, even though it looks beautiful and complex, once you break it down into all the angles and all the little pieces, it becomes easier. And once you get yourself a system of putting this all together and batching out these pieces, you could actually make this very, very complicated indeed. So I'll crack on now and make the rest of these and we'll jump back in when they're in place. Okay guys, there's all those pieces now in place. You can see we're almost home and dry on this one. So the next ones are very, very simple. These are our key pieces that lock it all together. And these are just the two 45s that go here to here. These little small pieces we have here, and these are nice and simple. So just put a 45 on both sides, again, keeping that angle nice and even. I'm just gonna measure this one off to here. I'll put a little pencil mark again, make it oversized, so about there. I cut four of these now, or sorry, I have eight of these to cut, so we have two per square and we start making these and I put them in. And we want these to be tight, we don't want them to be overly tight, but we want this to lock everything together for us. So let's get on and cut these. Okay, so that's the first of our key pieces cut there. 
and I'm just checking it for size and it seems to be pretty good. Now if you need to reduce these in size, if they're too tight, don't cut them. What you do is just pair a little bit off each side of the angle. That will reduce the overall length of the piece. So just pair a small bit off both sides, keeping it even, and you'll, you'll reduce it by a fraction each time. Now that's a really good fit. So that's exactly what we want. So it's nice and tight. It locks that piece all in place there. And uh, it's not over tight that it's deforming or square or putting real pressure on anything, but it holds everything nicely in place and all our angles are matching up. So I'll get on and make the rest of these and we get finished up on what we're doing. So there we go, There, that is the Asanoa pattern in Kumiko. Now, in order to square these up and trim off the excess pieces, we need to take this back apart again and then glue it all back together. Once it's glued up, then we can take off the outside pieces. So when you're disassembling it, just lay it out as it's going to go back together as you have it assembled here. A little dab of glue on each of where the joints meet and that should be good to go. And then you could set this into a lovely frame. You could put this into doors, you can put them into screens, you can make shoji lamps. You can actually turn these into lovely decorative coasters. There's loads of patterns. There's tons of books on the market all about Kumiko, all the different patterns, their names, the meanings behind all the patterns. They all have meanings to them as well. And you can make these into beautiful decorative landscapes. There's sky's the limit on what you can do with this stuff. It's just down to your imagination and getting all the angles right and you can do absolutely beautiful panel doors that are extremely intricate. So I'm going to make some shoji lamps um, coming up on the channel so we make some really nice um, hand cut frames and we'll set a lovely um, Kumiko pattern into them and I'll show you guys how to do all that as well. I'm also going to try out and experiment with different wood types using uh, making Kumiko. I'm going to get my hands on some European lime wood. I think that should be a good one. I'm struggling to get uh, base wood or basswood at the minute and I can't find any suppliers in Ireland that have basswood in stock so European lime wood is quite similar it has similar characteristics so I might make some out of that so we're gonna have plenty more Kumiko and more complex and intricate patterns coming up on the channel but that should get everybody started if you're interested in doing Kumiko work and I highly recommend you do get into it it's a lot easier than you actually think once you get started once you get set up with your jigs and you can buy kits online if you're not uh, comfortable making your own jigs you can buy the actual kits you can buy these jigs and you can buy um, pre-cut strips so hopefully you've enjoyed that one guys um, give it a thumbs up if you have if you're new here think about subscribing i shall see you in the next one we're going to have more kumako videos on the way so until then take it easy look after yourselves i'll see you in the next one